Good morning, and thank you so much for joining uh, our monthly user group, Light Tech Tips and Tricks. Uh, thank you for taking the busy time out of your schedule. This session will be recorded. Uh, you will be available for uh, you and other people to view it later on. My name is Robert Gabriel. I'm President and CEO of MicroWise Technology, and I will be your host today. Uh, I'm also going to have a pre-recording of uh, Greg Johns from uh, Relay Health. Disclaimer, anything you learn uh, in this session, uh, you need to verify yourself. MicroWise cannot be held responsible for any financial damage, loss of data, or any other life of change. The agenda today is we're going to talk about electronic uh, eligibility verification, call confirmation ability, and an AR management tools uh, inside LITEC. We're going to have uh, also a Q&A session. So on, uh, eligibility could happen in two separate ways. Uh, one is by having online with through a portal. Uh, so one of the partners we have is Relay Health, and if we uh, we give you a portal that you will be able to know eligibility, and that's a little we call this the advent uh, uh, the uh, advent uh, ad, advanced eligibility. Uh, so we call this the uh, advanced eligibility, and that ad, uh, eligibility gives you more. We're going to see now. Then I'm going to show you later a brief of you know, how it will look inside LightTech. So let's, let me play that video now. Let's watch a quick overview of eligibility verification. Insurance payers deny 19% of U.S. claims due to patient eligibility and coverage issues. Eligibility verification is one of the best ways to prevent insurance payment denial, avoid bad debt, and improve cash flow. Eligibility is also essential to help ensure collection of patient payments that are escalating due to high deductible health plans. Eligibility checking often doesn't happen because it's labor intensive. The average labor cost for each eligibility verification averages around $2.70 for a phone call. Despite the desire to get this information electronically from the payer, some payers may only indicate that the patient has insurance. This creates added work for staff to call or log on to payer websites to get the answers they need. Relay Health can help get you current and actionable patient eligibility. We extend your knowledge beyond basic EDI by assimilating detailed data found on more than 500 payer websites. Added information may include the patient's balance on their annual deductible, eligibility for multiple services, and important messaging that is clear and easy to understand. Our Connect Center online eligibility portal helps simplify insurance verification to help you to avoid claim denials and maximize upfront patient collections. Our easy-to-use workflow helps you determine if the patient is covered by insurance, identify copays, deductibles, and coinsurance levels for patient collections at the time of service, quickly filter to benefits based on the types of services, such as chiropractic, emergency services, professional office visit, urgent care, and others. Obtain past requests on eligibility for up to six months to track down payer denials that may be associated with member coverage. In addition to our Connect Center portal, you can also integrate eligibility within your solution with our APIs. Access to normalized and targeted data allows you to quickly access what you need without the complexity of knowing EDI. Relay Health is committed to your business. We have achieved CAQH Core Standards certification to ensure we offer the best service to you. Help enhance your cash flow and save staff time with the support of Relay Health's extensive payer eligibility verification. Sign up today.
I have on the call with me uh, Greg Jones, senior product engineer from Relay Health, and he's. I'm going to transfer the presentation to him, and he's going to take it from here. Thank you, Greg. Okay. Thanks a lot. So, um, Robert asked me to talk to you guys today um, about a partnership we're uh, we're entering into, and I know that uh, he had wanted me to share with you some of the things we've been working on, some of the things that I think really separate us and, and set us apart um, from other vendors that you, you may have be working with or have worked with in the past. And so I'm just going to kind of touch at a very high level some of those tools um, that you're going to be able to use as a Relay Health customer. And one of the, uh, one of the overarching things that we have tried to do here is really make it so that we are giving you information, we're pushing information out to you so that you don't have to dig around for it, you don't have to know what you're looking for. Um, we're able to just provide you information about your, your processing, about your transactions at Relay Health and give you that information, um, push that up to you. So, Robert, um, do you would you like me to kind of go into eligibility here and maybe talk yeah. a little bit about that? Or? Yeah, 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 please. Okay. So we've worked uh, really hard. One of the things we've been working on, and, and I certainly have been focused on for the last year, is dealing with eligibility. And I know if, if you're used to doing eligibility verifications online, um, you know, doing it programmatically or, or entering it in um, to a portal or, or whatever tool you're using to do eligibility verification. Um, in Connect Center, we decided to make an eligibility product that is going to, you're going to be able to do the standard, hey, I'm going to make a request, I'm going to get a response. But what we've tried to do is give you a little more, take it a little further give you that actionable information that we're, we're really striving to deliver. Um, so instead of getting a list of benefits, here you go, good luck, we are trying to um, drill down and give you views of the benefits. So what's the copay? What's the deductible? What's the remaining amount on the deductible? Um, within Medicare, you know, what is, is there episode of care, um, you know, Things like that. Uh, are you within an episode? Um, what are the, the skilled nursing days? Things like that. We're trying to arrange that information to make it more consumable, more useful um, as you do eligibility. The other thing is that we are taking any eligibility re we any eligibility request or response of the whole transaction that we get, and we are putting it in Connect Center. We're saving all of this for 180 days. So. If you were to do an eligibility transaction, let's say in LIHTC, you could still go see that in Connect Center. And so you would be able to take advantage of these views because anything that's going through there, anything that's going through Relay Health is going to be shown here, again, for up to 180 days. So the one thing I can do, and I, I really think that this is a huge differentiator um, that I, nobody else is doing, we're able to search. So you can put in search parameters, you can get a list of eligibility transactions, and you know you can search on different parameters, and you can open up that transaction, and you're going to see the request. You're going to see all the various pieces of the request, um, the you know the provider and the um, the member ID and the first name and last name, all that stuff that you would expect. And then you're also going to be presented with the demographic information that's coming back in eligibility. So obviously when you go to build a claim, you want to build it with what's on file at the payer. And we're highlighting that information here. And then we're giving you all of the benefit information and we're kind of making it into an easier to use, um, into a easier to use presentation. So if we also have this concept of views. So if you were interested in the deductible, for example, you can get to the deductible. Um, you can see the amount. You can also see the amount remaining. We're doing that calculation for you. So you would know if there were a deductible amount remaining. You would see that very clearly here. Now, the, since I've been we're in also, healthcare, I'm sorry, Greg. Since I've been in healthcare, people have been asking about this. There is a lot of uh, 
practices out there, they hold their claims, not submit it. I've seen people waiting seven months not to submit it. This is like holding on your money for seven months because they are afraid to build a patient and not get paid. So they wait for other practices to build. I don't know the legality of it, but I'm, it's not of my business. All I know is I hate to see you guys waiting on your money because you're waiting for somebody else to eat up the deductible or build a patient for the deductible. This gives puts you in the driver's seat here, tell you if the patient met the deductible or not. This is huge. I've been asked about this for 20 years. People have been asking about it. Now we have it. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. And and this is all stuff that we've been we've been working on. We've been listening to the feedback. Um we've been taking into account all of these industry um industry wide issues. And and to Robert's point, you know, this has been an ongoing issue. I think eligibility in general, you get a lot of information back and, and it's it's more of a matter of how do you deal with it. Um how how do you make it actionable? How do you make it so that uh, you can see a deductible, you can see the remaining amount and, and know kind of how much you're supposed to take. Um, so it's not just nice to know information, it's actually here's something I can do to improve my, um, my cash flow. And, th and that's really what we have in our mind when we're working on all of our products. And you can also sort by the different service types. So, you know, you, you're, you're just, you're going to have a lot more visibility into uh, what is uh, concerning, you know, what is your concern um, for eligibility. You're going to have that ability to drill in. So a lot of plans now have high deductible, high coinsurance, high copay. By knowing how much the patient is due, you, you can get that money up front. You don't have to wait to build a patient and good luck getting that money. You can actually do the calculation up up on the front here before the patient leaves, and get it uh, from the patient if that's what you want to do. So in Litec, uh to work on account receivable, there's a couple ways of doing it. Uh, there's the old-fashioned way of doing account receivable. I can come to reports and run an aging report, and I can do patient aging. I can go do insurance aging. Uh, the nice thing in when you're running an aging report is I can pick uh, old aging or if it's older than 31 days, so that doesn't give you these 0 to 30. Uh, depending on how big is your practice, you can subtotal um, by provider or by location. Now, when I like to review the report on the screen, so this is just the old-fashioned way that practice has been doing for maybe since practice management software were invented uh, almost 30 years ago. Uh, the problem with this is this report gets printed, so it might be a few hundred pages. Uh, the other thing is that report is you start to take notes on it. When the payment comes in, that payment doesn't reflect on the report, so you always have to cross uh, reference with the database going back to your light I can see was this still open or not you start taking notes here there's no reminders you have to set your own manual reminders to follow up on a, a corresponding that you have with the patient or the insurance company and this way is too much manual too much labor and it's not an automated way so the automated way is if you go under billing, there's something here called the AR management tool. So the AR management tool is, it's an electronic version of what you would get on your aging report. Now, I can pick and choose that I want things 30 days or above. I can pick a different dollar amount. So this means give me anything older than 30 days that has a balance above $50 and let me work on it um, so when I hit this OK button it goes and it scans my database and it just finds me all the ones I need to work on so that will give me my list to work on and I can assign this whatever I select I can assign the whole batch uh, 
so let's go over this and and learn what it does so i i have a task here say to review the billing it has the due date i means it's insurance responsibility and that insurance happened to be a primary insurance came from billing number three the chart number is this person and it's this is how old it is and this is the insurance company this is the dollar amount and now if I double click on this tickler I'm gonna call it tickler when I open this tickler here I get to see all my nodes of everything I did uh, so again this is the same information that was in columns except it's giving me a little bit more information about who, the phone number to call this insurance company this is the patient information with the patient phone number uh, a lot of times when you call an insurance number they ask you for social security if it's medicare they ask you if you know what's the date of uh, birth so you have it here for convenient uh, if i click on the responsible party button it takes me to the insurance information maybe i have more detail about that insurance when i close i go back to this if i want to call the patient or find more information about the patient i can click here and that opens the patient record um, if i just need to quickly access something from here charges and payment this is the tells you how this uh, charge came about uh, this is the demo data this is not a real data so that's why it's a, such an old transaction uh, edit notes when I edit notes whatever information that I type in here So this is just, and this is just a, a, a basic word processor, so I can change the font. Maybe this is too big, I can make it smaller. Maybe I can make something bolder or not. Uh, you get to choose however you want it to handle this. So, you know, if you want something to stand out, you can give it a color or you can give it a bold. Uh, when you close, so the next time I come back to that note, I get to see what I wrote here. You can have a timestamp of today's date. Um, over here is, is so we always had patient notes in LIHTC. The collection note or the AR note, this is separate, they didn't mix it together. I can now create a new task. I can create a new reminder. So this is what I, you know, this is where it's referred to it as a tickler, where it gets to remind you on a particular day to do something. Uh, also here the billing related so depending if that was patient responsibility I can send the statement if I want to rebuild the insurance company I will click rebuild and what it does if I hit rebuild uh, if I say yes what happened here if I go back to my charges what it did it just turned on the checkbox to build that insurance company so it will pick it up in the next batch so it's doing it automatically for you so that's that's how this tickler works now let's go back to uh, to the main screen of my tickler so over here what I like about it is I also can sort it I can sort it by the newest I can sort it by the oldest I can sort it by the dollar amount you you're not going to be able to do that from a printed aging report and if you have a larger organization you can segment certain uh, agent to work on certain uh, type of insurance or dollar amount or or how old it is so you can if you are the only one that's doing everything it's a good place to to have everything in one place all the insurance collection all the patient collection when i mentioned the word collection it's internal collection uh, some people when they hear the word collection they think of outside collection I'm talking about internal collection here uh, so this is the beauty about this it's dynamic if I receive the payment or somebody else received the payment in my practice I you know this is updated so if the balance open was $440 and I received $200 it's going to reflect it if you do that on a paper 
aging report you don't have that reflected you will always have to cross a reference unless you have you know an amazing memory then you will remember everything and you're the only one doing everything uh, but this is more organized there's more structure to it and it's beautiful for you know larger group more than one person so uh, each person can work on a different thing or the right hand knows what the left hand is doing so i i highly recommend the ar management tool as a new method of uh, dealing with patient collection and insurance collection or follow-ups thank you okay so now i'm going to show you how to do the eligibility inside the LIHTC program uh, it's not going to give you everything that we saw on the portal but it, it's integrated so uh, we've been having this product for many years uh, highly recommend it you will be getting both if you once you join the eligibility you will be getting the option to do both the portal and the um, the built-in so the built-in can happen, uh, you have to be using the scheduling in LIHTC and based on the patient that you schedule, um, you will be checking two days, four days, three days, whatever number of days you want before they come into your practice. So let's log in here. So you can do this on demand. So if you're looking at a patient record, uh, one of the option here when you click on patient, there will be eligibility. You could also, if you function key person, you can just push the F9 key on your keyboard. If I hit eligibility now, it will go and um, it will verify the information. So let's take a look up here. So what happened here, it does tell me that it was checked. Uh, this particular one, it, it's my demo. This was checked. Uh, you know, this is an old transaction, but just to, to look at it. Uh, and it will tell me here that what is in how much you cover network out of network deductible uh, you know the if you are an urgent care or an emergency room how much you collect so this is an old one if i want an updated one i can just hit verify and it goes and verify again for me now this is not a real data so it might bomb on me now. So if this was a real data, it will go and verify and bring an updated information here. And that information will get attached here. I can also look at a more detail and see the detail here. So this is similar to what we saw online, but it has a summary of the benefits. The the, my, the recommended way of doing this is to schedule this to happen to all the patient that's coming for your schedule. So um, when I'm scheduling a patient, uh, so that patient is scheduled. So each patient are scheduled depending on your schedule view. And now the system will go and verify all this eligibility before they come in. To do that, uh, I believe it's under Tools, Task Scheduler, uh, Schedule Eligibility. Then you go and design eligibility here. So okay, and you start, this is the starting date. Uh, you can do an ending date, you can tell it uh, what 
uh, you know, if you want to have an end date, what time you want it to do. So let's say I like to do it uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on a daily basis. And this here is for every patient eligible two days before the appointment. And do not verify if, if the... If you already, within the same week, you already, the patient came in before, uh, you want to reduce the amount of data that keeps coming back. Uh, and you can normally, like, I don't want to check it again within five days, but you can control this. Um, you want to verify the primary insurance. You want to verify, you can verify the secondary or tertiary. So when you save this, then now this goes and, and checks two days before each appointment, and it does it automatically. So when you go, you will be able to get a report for all the patients. Let's say Monday, uh, I have 50 patients coming. It will go and give you a report out of those 50 patients, um, which one are eligible and which one are not. There also, there should be a flag here that tells you if they are eligible or not. Let's see where the flag. Okay, I can also right click on an appointment and verify if that was a walking and, and I just want to verify that appointment. I can just do that and just verify that appointment. So there's so many different ways of doing it. So that summarizes the eligibility verification. And let's move on now to the next topic. Uh, Co-confirmation, cool let me... Uh, now, it, it, a lot of times we take it up on ourselves to try to do everything. Uh, the staff try to become heroes and try to do everything, but there's limited time of the day. There's people get stuck in traffic. And I'm the type of person, if I can have things automated, automation is the best way. Automation is technology is the only weapon that you have to overcome all the healthcare challenges that you have. Uh, because if we try to do everything ourselves, we don't, there's not enough hours, there's not enough money to do it. Uh, for very little, you know, as little as $50 a month, that, that comes out to be, you know, $1.50 a day that you can save, uh, you can remind somebody that they had an appointment and reduce your no show. Uh, so this is a tremendous value for $1.50 a day. It, it takes you a lot longer than that to do it yourself because you have to pay for the phone call, you have to pay for the labor, then you play phone tags. So let the automated system do it for you. So let's watch a quick demo on how this is done. Welcome to AutoRemind. This video will show you AutoRemind's features and functions with McKesson's LiTech product. AutoRemind is an automated reminder system that will execute for you all the hard work that goes into reminding patients of their appointments. It will call, text, and email your patients to remind them of their appointments and has the ability to send out multiple reminders per appointment. You can send a straightforward reminder or ask them to actively confirm their appointment. But before you can do that, there are a few important points to understand. Once installed, you'll be able to call up AutoRemind while still working with your LiTech software, just like this. AutoRemind scans your calendar and patient data in real time in order to do that. Here you see a list of all your patients. As an example, take a look at John Doe here. Let me open up that patient file in your LiTech software. Here you see me change the last two digits in the phone number. Soon after I press save in LiTech, you can see that AutoRemind knows about it. The same applies to any calendar data. In AutoRemind, you can choose a reminder strategy for each patient. In a minute, we'll look at how to design these strategies. But for demonstration purposes, here's a short list for you to see. Click the Strategy tab to design and edit the reminder strategies. Here at the top is the same list you just saw before. And I'll select this email strategy. And now you see it contains three messages to be sent before the appointment. 
However, let's look at designing reminder strategies first. Here's an example of what you can do with Auto Remind. You may want an email reminder to go out to your patients seven days before their appointment so as to give them a chance to reschedule. Then, four days prior to the appointment, another email will go out asking them to confirm their appointment. If they do not confirm before 5 p.m. the next day, AutoRemind will call the patient and request another confirmation, but only if they didn't confirm via the first email. Believe it or not, confirming three to four days ahead is still plenty of time to forget the appointment, so AutoRemind can easily send another simple reminder the evening before the appointment. If your patient wants a different type of reminder, don't worry, that's possible too. Here we are back in the software. You can design any reminder strategy you want. It's important to first consider the type of contact data you have for your patients. Do you have more emails than phone numbers? Do you want to send text messages? Do you want your patients to confirm or just receive a simple reminder for their appointments? Once you're ready, you select a new strategy and give it a name like this. My first strategy. Let's say I want to make a phone call a few days before the appointment and email again closer to the appointment. First, I click the phone icon and I can place it on the line here, which demonstrates the time up to the appointment. I then select a confirmed template in English rather than a reminder message. I want it to go out a few days before, so I'll select three days before the appointment. Finally, I prioritize the telephone contact data I have. I want it to use the home phone first, and if that does not contain a number, it should use a second priority, the person's cell phone. Finally, I add the email. I'll move it out here to the right. I'll select a personal reminder in U.S. English and send that out one day before the appointment, like this. That's pretty much it. Very easy. Now I click to save and store. Going back to my John Doe patient, all I need to do is select that patient's reminder strategy as my first strategy, and Auto Remind will make sure the patient always receives that set of reminders every time he has an appointment. There can also be a clinic standard reminder strategy for the entire clinic, if that's something you prefer. Now the only thing you need to do is schedule appointments as you always do. Just create your appointments like I do here for John Doe. Auto Remind will automatically receive the appointment details and ensure that the patients are reminded or asked to confirm their appointments. Here's an example of a text and email confirmation message, or template if you will. You confirm text messages by sending a reply with the word confirm or letter C, while a click on the confirm button in the mails is sufficient. Voice calls would require you to press the 5 button to confirm. All these message templates come as a standard design, or we can even customize them to your design needs, even in other languages. As an option, you can ask AutoRemind to set any confirmed messages to be confirmed inside your software. If an appointment is unconfirmed in LIHTC, but now confirmed by a patient using text, voice, or email, then the status will change the status inside your software as well. This is not a requirement, but just an option. You can also pull a report regarding the auto-remind appointments on a daily basis. Just select a day and create a status report for printing, if that will work better for your office. Thank you for watching how auto-remind works with LIHTC from McKesson. Using AutoRemind is really as easy as we hope you have seen in this video. Visit our website and to sign up for your free AutoRemind trial. Okay, now let's go back and uh, we're going to now to talk about the collection lists, the internal collection where we can have ticklers to follow up on account receivable. I want to thank you so much for your time, for joining us today. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh, thank you for your business. Thank you for taking the valuable time to join us or to watch this uh, after hours. Uh, thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.